in the largest gathering of men during the last few months of the greatest man that ever walked on earth. Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is about to deliver a speech. The speech is concise. The time is tight. The crowd is large. Hajj is exhausting. And of all the topics, he chooses very few to address. One of them being the rights of women. Where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fattakullaha fin nisa. He said, Beware of the rights of women. Ittakullaha fin nisa. Be scared to your core from Allah's punishment had you oppressed any one of them. Whether that woman is a daughter, is a sister, is a wife, or a mother. All categories, beware. Islam honored every one of them. Listen to this. When it comes to a daughter, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man yali, whoever was blessed, given, decreed to have girls. And he took care of them. فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنْ كُنَّ لَهُ سِتْرًا مِنَ النَّارِ These girls you took care of, you sheltered because of them. Allah will shelter you from hell. Allahu Akbar. As little as little girls. When back in the day, they would bury them alive. And not too long ago, even in this country, they had hardly any rights. No, 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 it got really bad. They did not just not inherit. They used to be part of the inheritance. The father dies, has multiple wives. He would give one son and the right in the will. You take a horse, you take this house, and you take three women. Part of the inheritance. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And you come today. You go to Mecca. Mecca, the house of Allah. People making tawaf, millions. Safa and Marwa, Sa'i. People drinking Zamzam, people about to pray. But all of a sudden, what happens? To the most part, tawaf comes to a pause. Safa and Marwa come to a pause. People don't even sometimes finish the drink of Zamzam and they lay their prayer. Why? There's a funeral prayer on a little girl. So the tawaf around the house of the king of all kings comes to a pause to pray janazah, funeral prayer on a little girl. Islam. And don't you try your best, don't ever ever be shaken when someone criticizes Islam and how they treat women. The more educated you are, the more confident and stronger you may be. Wallahi, no one honored women the way Allah honored them. No one, don't let anyone, no book, no class on campus, no eloquent speaker, no program on TV to brainwash you and tell you Islam is backwards, outdated, and no longer practical. It abuses women, doesn't give them their rights. Wallahi kadhi, wallahi it's a lie. Islam is applicable to every time, to every person in any location. We speak about daughters, then you go to the sisters. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wa ahlul jannati thalath. There are three types of people that go to Jannah. One of them, وَرَجُلٌ A man. اسمع كلمة رجل. مش ذكر. Not a male. A man. رجل. رحيم. Merciful. رقيق القلب. Soft-hearted. Towards whom? لِكُلِّ ذِي قُرْبَى وَمُسْلِمٌ To every relative. To your blood brother and your blood sister. When she calls you, she has a problem. في سبيل الله. Answer that call. And this is عبادة. إن شاء الله. You will be guaranteed. إن شاء الله. Jannah. Because of that assistance to your sister. وَكُلِّ مُسْلِمٌ Every Muslim. Whether man or woman. Then you go to the wife. When you go to the wife, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He says, خيركم, خيركم The best one in this gathering is the one who is best to his wife. وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي And I am the best husband to my wife. Allahu Akbar. Why would he tell us about him? Why did he not just tell us the best of you are the best to their wives? Why did he say about himself? Because don't be fooled and think that manhood means you're tough on women. He says, I am the greatest man, the most one that fears Allah. If you want manhood, it doesn't get any better. And I am the kindest and the best to my wife. So if you want to be the greatest, follow my footsteps. Wallahi, he is not a true mu'min, a true man. He's not a true man in which the wife begs, begs for a nice word to come from his mouth. He's not a true man who follows Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which the wife begs for him just to smile. He's not a true man. He's not a true man, the one who is so kind to the whole world. Outside the house, he's the most generous, the kindest, most understanding. But once he comes back home, like a wild beast.
No one wants to give eye contact to him. They avoid him because, oh, if he gets angry, oh, he gets wild. He becomes verbally abusive and even physically abusive. May Allah protect us. That's not a true, real man. When you listen to Rasulullah wasalam, do you know that frequently Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not call Aisha? Aisha? I'm confused. What do you mean? Her name is Aisha radiallahu anha. But he doesn't always call her by her first name like that. He used to call her Ya Aish. That was a sweet nickname that would he mention to her. She loves it. He loves it. It grows the love between them. This is Sahih Bukhari. So you and I should attempt to be like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Give a sweet nickname to your wife, to your daughter, to your sister, especially here in the wife. Whatever the example may be. Fatima, when I call her Fatuma, Hadiya, Hudhud, Hala, Halul. You name it, you become creative. And we are blessed with technology. You use emojis. Yeah, use the flower, use the kiss, use the heart. And follow the footsteps of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is our deen and I'm not ashamed to mention it in a gathering of pretty much men because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said fattaqullaha fin nisa to the biggest gathering of men in hajj this khutbah is more to the brothers than anyone else and, and I'm the first one that should apply what I'm saying may Allah make it easy for me and all of us ya Rab and may Allah forgive me and forgive all of us ya Rab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his wife Aisha radiallahu anha she was asked كيف يكون النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في البيت؟ How does the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم behave while he is at home? He's done his work. He comes back home. What does he do? She says, كان في خدمة أهله أو في مهنة أهله. He used to serve his family. What is? What do you need? You need this? I got you. This? I'm here and I'm there. He's servicing his family 100% attention as much as he possibly can. May Allah allow us to follow the footsteps of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then you go on to the mother. We spoke about the daughter, the sister, and the wife, and then now you go to the mother. And where do we start, Ya Allah? Where do we start? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a sahabi comes to him. He says, Ya Rasulullah, aradtu al-ghazu wal-jihad fi sabilillah. Then he says, Hal laka um? Hal laka min um? Is your mom alive? Is your mom around? He says, Naam, Ya Rasulullah. Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told him, Falzamha, fa'inna al-jannata tahta rijlayha. Authentic narration. He says, then go to your mom and stick to her. Jannah is under her feet. Had a deen. We become creative sometimes. May Allah grant us wisdom. We go there, we go here, we travel the world to get Jannah. We're trying to please Allah. But Jannah, ya miskeen, me and others who may be in similar situation, your Jannah is in the living room under the respected lady's feet, your mom. Right there. Where are you, Where are you going? Allah, da, I want to do this. Where's your mom? She's angry at me. What nafir, what benefit is my khutbah? Excuse me? If my mom is angry at me right now, what benefit is this khutbah? What benefit is my salah? That's, that's the big statements you're saying. You have to watch up. No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that the one who angers their mom and dad for no justification, complete wronging from your end, فَلَا يُقْبَلُ لَهُ صَرْفًا وَلَا عدلا. What does that mean? Allah does not accept your obligatory or your voluntary prayers, or your fasting, or your charity, or your zakah. How can we face Allah? You want more? I want more, we'll give you one more. Do you know on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, that woman who's oppressed, do you know who will be next to her? Getting the rights that she deserved, but she didn't take it in dunya because that man oppressed her or that individual? The one next to her will be Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you handle the opposing team being Muhammad against you? Give me the hadith. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Inni uharriju alaykum, I warn you. Tahdeed wa wa'eed. I warn you. Tahdeer. I threaten you. Fi haqqid da'ifayn. When it comes to not fulfilling the rights of the two vulnerable, al-yateen wal mar'ah, the orphan and the woman. How, how can we handle that? How can we face Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. Ameen rabbal alameen. Then a man comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talking about the mother. He says, Ya Rasulullah, man ahaqqu al-nasi bi husni sahabati. Who deserves my best treatment? If I have one gift to give, if I have one hug to embrace, if I have one minute to spare with someone who deserves the best virgin of me, he said, Ummuk, your mom. Thumma man then who, Ya Rasulullah, the best virgin of me, the one gift to give, who else? Who's next? Thumma Ummuk. Then, Thumma man, Thumma Ummuk, then your mom. Thumma Abuk, then your father. This is what Islam teaches us. May Allah forgive me and all of us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And remember, Allah may not hold you accountable for why people did not fulfill your rights. 
But Allah will hold every one of us accountable if we did not fulfill other people's rights. So I pray to Allah to allow us to repent to Him today. And the Prophet told us, if you ever wronged someone, رُدِّ الْحَقِّ الْيَوْمِ مَنْ كَانَتْ عِنْدَ أَخِيهِ مَظْلَمَةً If you wronged anyone, فَلْيَتَحَلَّلْهُ مِنْهُ الْيَوْمِ Yallah, today, fix the problem. Return the right back. You took her money unjustly, give it back. You harmed her physically and emotionally, fix it in any way possible. Why, Ya Rasulullah? مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِي يَوْمٌ لَا دِرْحَمَ فِيهِ وَلَا دِنَارِ before a day comes where you give her the whole world and Allah will not accept Yawm al Qiyamah. Then what's the currency, Ya Rasulullah? It's not the dollars, not the yen, it's none of that stuff. It's al hasanati wa sayyat. Good deeds and bad deeds. And we don't want to go there to fix the problem. May Allah grant us a sincere tawbah, sincere forgiveness from Allah, followed by actions from us to give people their rights back. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah allow us to treat our women in a way and pay attention. May Allah allow us to treat women mothers, daughters, wives, sisters in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we all be fine inshallah.